Hi, welcome back. In previous sessions, we have looked at EdgeCore's EWS controllers and access points. EWS controllers provide centralized AP management from one place. So after an AP has been added on the controller for management, in just a few clicks, you'll be able to monitor the APs at any time. In addition, notifications can be set up for you to stay on top of status changes of the APs. And in this session, we will dive into how EdgeCore's indoor and outdoor access points can be managed by the EWS controller. We'll begin by giving an introduction to our AP management. The EdgeCore controller can manage APs across a Layer 2 or Layer 3 network. And through cross-Layer 3 AP management, APs sitting on different networks at remote locations can also be managed. Then, we will cover key features supported in our AP management, such as how to add a large number of APs at one time. And this is followed by the introduction of Layer 3 AP management. We will explain complete tunnel and split tunnel in more detail and compare their differences. Then we will show you a deployment example where split tunnels are used. Last, we have an appendix for showing you an example on how to set up AP management from the controller's web management interface. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. EdgeCore simplifies AP management by supporting centralized AP discovery, AP registration and provisioning, template-based configurations, bulk firmware upgrade, and status monitoring. The diagram here shows that our solution provides centralized AP management across both Layer 2 and Layer 3 networks. When we talk about Layer 2 AP management, we're typically referring to management of APs located on the LAN side of the controller. And when we talk about Layer 3 AP management, it is typically management of APs located on the WAN side. And the APs may even be behind NAT. And this is where tunnels come into the picture. By using the CatWap protocol to establish a tunnel between the controller and each of the APs, the APs can discover the controller and be automatically registered on the controller even when the APs are behind NAT. Then, AP templates can be configured on the controller so that the templates can be applied to multiple APs at the same time from the controller. This will save time and effort for network administrators. And bulk firmware upgrades and configuration backups can also be done in a few clicks. Last, monitoring the status of the APs is an essential part of network health monitoring. So from the controller, you can check the status of the APs to see if they're online or offline, or if a template is being applied to the APs. Now, we will talk more about Layer 2 and Layer 3 AP management. As there are many different network architectures, we also provide several ways of adding the AP so that our solution can be flexibly deployed. If the APs are on the same Layer 2 network as the controller's LAN, this is our Layer 2 AP management. Note that if customers already have some third-party APs in their Layer 2 network, we have a feature that allows you to monitor the status of these APs, as well as calculate the number of associate clients provided that independent VLANs have been configured. This would be useful if you're integrating our solution with existing network infrastructure that already have third-party APs. Then, if the APs and the controller are routable over a Layer 3 network, then we provide two options for adding the APs on the controller. First, you can add the APs manually by creating static entries. Second, you can discover the APs from the controller. But if the APs are behind NAT, then CatWalk protocol can be used for the APs to initiate the discovery and discover the controller so that they can be automatically registered later on. Once the APs have been registered, whether they are Edge Core or third party APs, you can go to the web management interface of the individual APs by simply clicking on a go to button that is available on the web management interface. 
By using EWS controllers, no matter where the APs are located, AP management becomes simple and intuitive. Now that we have covered the basic concepts of EdgeCore's AP management, we're going to talk about the features supported in AP management in more detail. When deploying a wireless network with hundreds of access points, it would be very inefficient if one has to add each AP to the management list on the controller. To simplify network deployment, EdgeCore's controller has the ability to perform centralized discovery of APs. The APs can be on the same Layer 2 network as the controller's LAN. In this case, the controller can discover the APs based on Layer 2 broadcasts. Or, the APs in the controller can be routable over a Layer 3 network. In this case, just fill in the subnet of the APs for the controller to discover them. And after the APs have been discovered, they can be registered on the controller. Note that for this slide, we're showing you AP discovery initiated by the controller. Conversely, APs can be the ones to initiate the discovery and discover the controller. This is done with the help of the CAPWAP protocol, which brings us to the next slide. When CAPWAP is enabled and related settings have been configured on the controller and the APs, the APs can automatically discover and assign controller to be registered. Then, after the APs have been registered, configurations can be pushed to the APs by using templates. Now, moving on, we're going to cover how remote AP management works in more details. We have a feature on the controller called Wide Area AP Management, or WAPM. And this feature is intended to be used for centralized AP management over Layer 3 networks. In WAPM, you can have edge core APs on either the WAN and or the LAN side of the controller. And third-party APs have to be on the LAN side of the controller. On this slide, you can see a screenshot of AP list in WAPM. But besides AP list, you can see from the left column that map integration is supported and you can configure settings like templates, um, CAPWAP related settings, or perform firmware upgrades, and so on. So far, we have mentioned this CAPWAP protocol a few times, so let's talk more about this protocol. CAPWAP is a protocol for the control and provisioning of access points. In CAPWAP protocol, a control channel is established using UDP port 5246, and a data channel is established using UDP port 5247. Therefore, when CAPWAP is enabled, make sure that these UDP ports are accessible at all deployment sites. Therefore, through these CAPWAP tunnels over UDP, you can have an EWS controller at a central location managing APs that are located at separate remote locations. Despite the physical distance between them and despite the fact that these APs may be behind NAT, Google Maps can also be integrated to facilitate deployment planning and to provide quick visualization of where the APs are located. In EdgeCore's AP management, two types of tunnel can be leveraged, complete tunnel and split tunnel, as shown on the slide. The major difference between the two is how user data traffic is routed after user authentication. In the case of split tunnel, User data traffic does not go through the controller after successful user authentication, but rather it exits locally. Let's look at complete tunnel first. As you can see, all the traffic, including data, management, and authentication, will be tunneled back to the EWS controller. A major benefit of using a complete tunnel is that remote users across Layer 3 networks can access the intranet as if they were on the same network as the controller. We can also leverage complete tunnel when troubleshooting so we can simulate local clients. Most important of all, when complete tunnels are used, policy enforcement is fully supported. However, the trade-off here is that since all traffic would be tunneled back to the controller, this may cause a high overhead on the bandwidth and thus creates network bottlenecking. Also, this adds to the system load. 
Therefore, in some cases, you may want to use the split tunnel instead. As mentioned previously, in split tunnel, after successful user authentication, data traffic will not be tunneled back to the controller, and instead, it is routed locally to the internet. Note that in split tunnel, the AP would also generate accounting traffic for sending to the EWS controller. And this allows the controller to monitor the client's data usage, which is required in, for example, on-demand authentication. However, there are a few things to note when using split tunnel. First, the controller has to be in tag-based mode. Second, only when one on the controller can be used for establishing split tunnels. So please avoid configuring when to's IP address as the controller's IP address in CapWAP settings. Third, as the data traffic is not tunneled back to the controller, policy enforcement is only partially supported. For example, only bandwidth control in QS profile is supported. For more details, please refer to the EWS controller's user manual. So complete and split tunnels can actually be simultaneously supported on one controller, and you can choose the tunnel type for each SSID. Please note that each service zone will only accept one tunnel type. So if you have multiple SSIDs mapping to the same service zone, make sure that you only select one tunnel type for all of these SSIDs. In this diagram, you can see that two SSIDs have been configured, one for staff members and the other one for guests. For the staff SSID, we can choose to use a complete tunnel so that staff members can access the internet at the headquarters for obtaining certain resources. For the guest SSID, we can configure it to use a split tunnel so that we can prevent those connected on this SSID from accessing the internet at the headquarters while being able to manage the users by collecting their information, restrict their usage time, and so on. This is one example of split tunnel deployment. Here we have deployed wireless networks at three institutions, institutions A, B, and C, and each of these institutions uses a different ISP for internet service. There is a controller deployed at the main office that governs the wireless networks running in these institutions. When customers connect to an SSID using split tunnel, they will be redirected to the EWS controller for authentication. And after successful authentication, their data traffic will be routed to the internet directly from each of these institutions. In this scenario, they have placed limitations on network usage through on-demand and guest authentications. Furthermore, idle timeout threshold has also been configured so that authenticated users will be kicked once their network usage is up or when their idle time reaches the idle timeout threshold. To help you learn to set up WAPM more quickly, in this section, we will guide you through the basic steps for setting it up. Once you go to WAPM on the web management interface of the controller, on the left-hand side, you can see all the tabs available in WAPM, and the first one is AP List. This will probably be the page you will visit the most often because it shows all the managed APs with their information such as model, name, IP address, MAC address, and so on. Then, as mentioned previously, we support MAPS integration so that you can easily see where the APs are located on a map. This is especially helpful if you have outdoor APs. In WAPM, each AP must be configured to belong to a map, as well as assigned to an AP group. Administrator accounts can be created with read or write or read-only permissions to one or several AP groups. For example, one administrator account may have the permission to manage AP Group 1, and another account may have the permission to manage AP Group 2. And AP Group 1 and AP Group 2 can represent AP groups in different regions, for example. Next, on the template page, you can configure templates for the APs so that these templates can be later applied to the APs. For the firmware tab, 
We provide a platform where you can upload the AP firmware for firmware upgrades later. Then CapWap tab is also important when using CapWap with WAPM. Please make sure to enable CapWap from here. Last, ROG AP detection as well as load balancing are features that may also be enabled depending on your needs. So after an AP has been added to a map, you can define the latitude and the longitude of the AP. If you click on the AP on the map, you will see a pop-up showing information about this AP, such as its status, number of clients, and its IP address and MAC address. You will also find options to edit its information as well as to go to the web management interface. We also provide a distance calculation tool on this page so that you can calculate the distance between any two APs. Next, we will demonstrate the steps to configure CapWap settings. By following the steps shown here, CapWap settings can be easily configured. First, go to Device Management and WAPM, then click on the CapWap tab. The first step is to enable CapWap and configure the IP address and netmask for a control channel, or you can leave them as they are. Then click Apply. Step 2. We also need to enable and configure CapWap settings on the AP. Please go to System and then CapWap on the AP's web management interface. There are six options for the AP to discover the controller. You can read up on all the different discovery methods. But the one we would usually recommend is static discovery, as this is the most straightforward discovery method. So you can simply enable CapWap, disable all discovery methods except for static discovery, then enter the IP address of the controller below. Note that the AP will have to reboot once you apply the settings. Step 3. While the AP reboots, we can begin to configure AP templates. We can start from configuring the SSIDs, so please go to VAP configuration and the template. You can configure the settings as desired, and for CapWap Tunnel Interface, you can choose either Complete Tunnel or Split Tunnel. Then select a service zone the SSID will map to. With regards to VLAN ID, for Complete Tunnel, this VLAN is set by the system and is the VLAN used within the tunnel, so that the VLAN is not related to VLANs used outside the tunnel in the local network. For split tunnel, the VLAN ID is the VLAN used for uplink connection in the local network. And this VLAN ID has nothing to do with the VLAN IDs of the server zones. Step 4. Once you're done configuring the templates, let's go back to the AP list. The AP may have already been added to the list, and once the AP has been added, successfully and brought online, the status will show the AP is online and the CapWap column would show Run. Now select the AP and click on Apply Settings. This is how we're going to apply the template that we have just configured. Now we're at step 5. This step is actually optional, but we can perform this step to see if the configurations have been applied successfully to the AP. After applying the template to the AP and the AP becomes online again, you can first check from the AP list if the CapWap status shows run. Then we can click the Go button from AP list to go to the AP's web management interface. Once you reach the AP's web management interface, you can go to System Overview to check the AP status as well as the CapWap status. In AP status, if the SSID uses a tunnel, a green check icon should be displayed. Then, go to VAP configurations and verify that all fields look correct. Now you can take a client to log in, and if you're able to log in, then you're all set. That is all for AP management provided by the EWS controller. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the next session.